Good morning. I am so sick looking at this, but some exciting news on that front. I went to the dermatologist a couple days ago, which is a regular occurrence, but this was for, a, like specifically for an acne check-in. And I walked in, the doctor looked at me and said, okay, it's time for Accutane, which was validating because that's what I've been thinking, but also disheartening. So I'm like, okay, so you recognize that this is a, a problem. This is not like a sudden decision. I have done Spiro for over a year, then I did doxycycline. I'm still on doxycycline <clears throat> as well as like topical things, but this is deep in my hormones so nothing topical really makes any difference if I were to have like a breakout or you know a zit anywhere other than my chin topical things deal with that fairly quickly but this area is just nothing works so yeah I'm gonna start the process of Accutane and I know it's a really intense one my brother was on it <clears throat> had a lot of family members that have been on it and I know it takes a toll so the, the thing that I'm most scared about or worried about is that my sister is getting married in six months and you know I'm going back to the dermatologist on February 6th to ask questions that I have prepared and just to make sure I know what I'm signing up for I know Accutane affects people differently. It can affect your mood, your mental state. It can make you really dry. My brother had really dry eyes. A lot of things. Apparently it can make you red, and I'm already red. Um, but what I am most concerned about is just being at her wedding and having like my skin flake off. But because that is like six months away, I'm hoping that the most intense symptoms, you know, are gone by then. So I'm gonna ask. And we'll see, and if there's any concern on my doctor's end, then maybe I'll wait to go on it until after the wedding. But ideally, I would love to have clear skin by the wedding. But I don't know. I mean, I'm used to this acne, so I'd rather stick to what I know than be at risk for, like, other things. But we'll see. I got distracted for about an hour because I am reading such a fantastic book and I know I said that I was going to take a hefty break from Robin Hobb to read other things, to stretch out the process of reading the realm of the elderlings, but I have no self-control <laughs> and I instantly dived in to Ship of Magic only a day or so ago and I am already loving this. I've mentioned before that I have been reading the series, The World of the Realm of the Elderlings, kind of out of order accidentally at the beginning and now I'm trying to get into the right order, the recommended order. But if you have read the Rain Wild Chronicles, um, you might know that there are a couple of things that I spoiled for myself because in this book we are following the Vest Street family. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I have been all over like the Reddit threads reading about this family because Selden and Malta are not um, new to me. I have read about them and their adult lives in the Rainwild Chronicles, so I know so much of what happens to this family. But either way, we are focusing on a character that is only briefly mentioned in the other series that I've read. Althea and she is already such an exciting character to be reading about. This is a massive saga. You can already kind of tell how many different perspectives and characters we'll be following. 
this is really about the live ship this entire series called the live ship trader series that is like some of the most interesting magic in this world about these ships that are actually it's called their their quickening where um the figurehead actually comes to life and has not not personhood but has personality and life and Althea has been kind of sent away from her fam from her inheritance essentially has been taken from her and I think we are about to follow her on her grand adventure. I think she'll be one of our main focuses but then there's also this um, kind of evil pirate figure named Kanit that we have been following a little bit and it looks like Althea and Kanit's journeys will eventually intersect because he is looking to become king of the pirate isles and looking for some magical treasure so it is just like so incredible there's already such emotion um and like heart-wrenching things happening to this family but all with this like incredible backdrop of the live ship which is just so exciting to read about and we just saw like the first quickening and this live ship come to life and we already are seeing Althea's relationship and like a deep emotional and soulful connection to the ship. It's just really wonderful. It's blurbed by George R. R. Martin and um, I am just so excited to be swept off into this world again even though I know about some of these characters. I know what eventually happens to them. I'm just like all I want to do is read this so that's why I've gotten distracted for a few hours but I did promise myself that I would get out of the house today I have no plans nothing I need to be doing but I would like to get a new book notes notebook to start for 2024 so that's something I'm looking for and then just a couple of errands to get out and about so I think I'm gonna leave the house it's just about 10 a.m. so some of the shops are just opening up and I'm gonna go explore a new neighborhood because obviously we moved and I am not very familiar with um, the neighborhoods around me, so that's my plan. back from my errands and I wanted to show you one of my favorite gifts I got for Christmas. This is a reusable bag my mom got me and it is the entirety of the text from Little Women. You can barely even see it because it's such fine small writing but how incredible is that? I read for a few hours and can confirm that this is so wonderful. 
I'm absolutely loving it. It is already so emotionally intense and real. There's already a lot of friction between a lot of our characters. The magic is really coming to life with the live ships. And I did go to the bookstore today. I wanted to get a notebook, which I was successful, but I also was specifically looking for Assassin of Reality or The Assassin of Reality. It's the second book in the Vita Nostra series. I'm not sure what the series itself is called, but one of the employees told me that the paperback is actually coming out in about a month, so I held on that one. And even though there are a couple of other books that intrigued me, like I found a Mievel that I hadn't heard of before, I decided to just not, if I didn't couldn't find the book I was specifically looking for, just to put everything down, at least for now, because I don't yet have bookshelves, which is fine. I think I probably won't have them for like a good few months still. And a lot of the books are piled up. Some are still in boxes, but I don't really want to add to the collection unless I imminently know I'm going to read something. But what I was doing when I took a break from reading and I was catching up on more YouTube best books of the year, top books of the year videos, which is like my absolute favorite thing to watch. But I was also looking at comments on my video because I was looking for recommendations specifically for Louise Erdrich novels because of how much and just how impressed I was by the book I read of hers. And a couple people recommended me Roundhouse, so I made known of that one. And then somebody also recommended me Love Medicine. So I'm trying to make a little list of books that I want to read in 2024. Nothing, you know, super formal. But just books that if I see them, I know I want to buy them. And it also just helps me when I go to a bookstore not to get lost in things. So I like having a little list. So Love Medicine is on there. Roundhouse is on there. The rest of the Live Ship Trader series is on there. Um, Assassin of Reality in Ascension is another sci-fi speculative book I really want to read. So just like forming a little list and we'll see if I get to them and if I can find them. But I am a book collector so I do like to have a library of the history of my reading experiences which you know sometimes you have to go a bit slow to compile that catalog but that's what I'm doing now and not much else to report. It's been a super lax and relaxing day and I've been enjoying it a lot. Just honestly having the best time reading this book. I am glad that I waited a little bit because I think you do have to space these books out because I always want to have something to look forward to but I'm just loving it. And then once I finish this one and it is pretty long but I'm already like over a third of the way through because it's a pretty fast read. Then I have to return to my next book club pick which is not as fun <laughs> at all <laughs> but that's my plan apologies for the background i am still <clears throat> struggling with not struggling but i am you know not having a nice little background yet i need this blue tape um it's for a mantle surround that we ordered that should be coming in in like the next month or so the couch should be coming in in like the next few weeks, even though every time we check the tracking, it pushes more. So I'm trying not to get too hung up on the date, but things are definitely coming together. It's just still a little bit piecemeal. And then I have a lamp I need to put somewhere, but our bar looks good. <laughs>
it's been a few days, but I thought that I would close out this video with a book haul that I'm starting the year with. These are some that I got over Christmas, the holiday period, and then I did go to a bookstore with my cousins yesterday and got two books, but they were both ones that were kind of on my list or list adjacent, so I think they count, and now I'm hopefully going to take a break. <laughs> but the two that I got yesterday, these are both um, from a used bookstore. I got a Louise Erdrich, which I was mentioning. I'm looking for more of her novels. This is not one that I've seen recommended to me specifically, but it's called La Rose, and I was just really intrigued by the blurb here. It sounds kind of thriller-esque. I won't read the blurbs of all of these, but let me know if you've read this. This was just intriguing. They had a couple of her books. None of the two that I mentioned previously, but this one intrigued me the most. And then I got The, the Word for World is Forest by Ursula K. Le Guin. I just generally want to read more Le Guin. I've read The Wizard of Earth, A Wizard of Earthsea, The Wizard of Earthsea, and I want to read more in her fantasy worlds, but I'm also just specifically intrigued by this one. I've seen some like separate reviews. I don't know if this is, I think it's a novella, but this one has gotten high praise. And one that I don't have here, it's in the other room, but I got a short story collection by Claire Keegan, So Late in the Day. Incredible. And then the other book my mom got me is Jasmine's Ward. Jasmine Ward's Let Us Descend. This is the author of Sing Unburied Sing. And my mom read, read this over like the Christmas week and said it was gorgeous and heartbreaking. And then a book that I already read. It was my first one of the year or second of the year. I read The Giant O'Brien by Hilary Mantel. This is a historical fiction set in London in the 1780s about an Irish man who comes over to make his fortune like displaying himself because he's a giant and then a really kind of icky scientist who's trying to collect his corpse and other oddities so this had like really great atmosphere and then another mantel i got an experiment in love this just sounded really wonderful and i'm just trying to read more mantel so all of these books now um the giant o'brien and onwards are from a used bookstore when i went to a town in upstate new york with my family and they had a wonderful selection so two mantels and then I got um, kind of annoying I couldn't find the first in the series but I got the books two of the books that make up the Gormenghast trilogy which is like an epic fantastical series I need to find the first one but I loved these editions and they were you know used and very inexpensive so hopefully I can find the first one but this is on my list to read this year maybe not the whole series but definitely interested in that and then I found some Mievels. Um, this census taker, this one sounds so bizarre. I will read a little part of the blurb because it's a remote house on a hilltop. A lonely boy witnesses a profoundly tragic event. He tries to flee, but then a stranger knocks at his door and the boy senses that his days of isolation might be over. But by what authority does this man keep the meticulous records he carries? What is the purpose behind his questions? Is he friend, enemy, or something else entirely? And then the book that I am most excited about in this stack is The Scar. This is the second book in the Bass Lag world. That is the world with where Pretty Street Station takes place. I believe this is another pirate novel, so I might be on just a pirate kick because I'm still reading Ship of Magic, but I am dying to read this one. It's another chunker, but I was just so blown away by Pretty to Street Station. I just cannot wait to return to this world. I think New Crobazon, the city, does feature, but we also leave the city on this like pirating adventure. So I just cannot wait to read more by him. I have a couple of his books on my shelf, but this is the one that I'm probably going to read first. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. I know it was a compilation of a couple very lazy and slow days, but that's just what life is right now. So thank you so much for being here and I'll see you very soon. Bye everyone.